share with you some at home aquaponics, which is taking aquaculture and hydroponics and merging the two together. In my other videos, you might have seen a thousand gallon livestock tank, and that can be pretty intimidating. But what if we want to do something at home or in elementary school or middle school class on a smaller scale using what we call appropriate technologies, or in other words, things you can find around your house? To take us back to the beginning where our plants come from, you can see that all of our plants are sitting in these little things that look like brownies. Uh, they almost look like soil. This material is actually rubberized peat. Rubberized peat is organic and it's an inert material. An inert substance is something that doesn't give off any nutrition or upset the pH balance of, of the water. So rubberized peat comes in trays. And these trays just so happen to fit inside of these greenhouses that you can buy online. Uh, the greenhouse collects heat. You can see the condensation building up on the side. Our light is off right now, but when it's on, it heats up the inside here because the, the seeds want warmth when they germinate. So we took this whole tray, which had 98, 98 seed spots in it, and I actually broke it in half, and I mixed in another inert material for germination called rock wool. It's hard to find rock wool now. A lot of stores have taken it off the market because um, even though it's great for growing plants in, very, uh, very, let me say that again. Even though rock wool is a great substance uh, for germination, and a lot of people have been using it for years, some, some growers who are very particular about the pH balance of their germination would, would say that when you put distilled water in rock wool and then test the pH of that water, rock wool will upset the pH from neutral. So an inert substance isn't supposed to do that. People are moving away from rock wool now and into rubberized peat. But you can see here, this tray is only about five days old since I've germinated and had them under the light 12 hours on, 12 hours off. And look at these sprouts. We have some, some spinach here. And uh, my dill is taking a little bit longer to catch on. But it's pretty simple. This thing comes out of the package. It's already moist. It's, it's in a sealed, sealed package. If you're doing herbs, you can put in five to 10 seeds in each one of these little holes and just shove them down in there with your finger. If you're using something like a tomato or a pepper or a plant that you would picture by itself, just one seed. Soak the thing down. We soaked it either with distilled water, but we use the fish tank water, full nitrogen. Pop the lid on. You can open the vent covers a little bit. You know, I don't know what's perfect, but I usually leave them closed for a couple days and then I open them up. And until then, just leave it, leave it on top until your plants get a little bit bigger. The last thing I'd like to show you, we could look back up here at the, the gutter trays that we've created. And you can see that I have my rubberized peat and my plants here that are about two weeks old sitting flat inside. They're getting water a couple times a day and you can see the roots growing at the bottom. The roots aren't going to get very big because here I'm bringing all the nutrients in the water right to the plant. So the plant doesn't need to expend its energy in producing longer roots to go find things. It's going to put that energy back into the fruit of the plant up top. Uh, mind you though, I do have to take these and transplant them into something else because right now the roots are just sitting flat and being crushed by the weight and they're staying wet all day long. That's no good. So what I'm going to be doing next in, the, in, in this uh, phase of the aquaponics system is transplanting my plants into net pots. Net pots are great. Coconut fiber potters are great too. They're another inert substance. And you can see inside here, I have my single cube. The tray of, of peat comes, comes perforated. You can pull them apart. My roots are healthy. They're nice and clear coming out the bottom. I stick this in the bottom of the net pot. Maybe put a couple hydrocoils down there. Hydrocoils, another word for expanded clay pellets. They're porous. They take the place of soil. They won't run out through the pot like soil would. And it gives the roots a nice little structure. Dump some more of them around. Make sure the plant can stick out the top. It would be ideal to fill this. And then put it back into my system. Now, the roots have plenty of room to get air when the water is turned off and breathe and also to get wet and get their wood and their nutrients. One note, plants like to have heat up around the top of the plant and once you go below the root they want cool water. A temperature of like 55-60 degrees is optimum because the colder the water 
the more oxygen you can saturate into that water. Uh, you will find that some people who, who do aqua, aquaponics commercially will definitely put chillers on their water and they'll grow a fish like trout because trout like it cold. Then they can fit more oxygen in the water. Something else that I don't have here, but you might see somebody with a CO2 emitter running off a propane tank and they're emitting CO2 right off the top so that the plants can suck that in. One note, we should have a fan over here on the side. Because these plants are producing oxygen, there's a cloud of oxygen sitting around the plant. It's going to choke itself out if you can't simulate that natural breeze every once in a while right, and, and clear the air around it. Two groups I'd like to thank. The first is TastyHarvestHydroponics.com. That's the company that's been donating to the classroom for years now, and without them, I uh, would have never broken into this area of technology education. The second is the NJTEA, the New Jersey Technology Education Association. It's the professional organization of which I'm a member of the board, and we represent over 490 technology education teachers in the state of New Jersey. You can check out our website too at njtea.org.